Snooper Thursday! Woo! And uh, yeah, John's behind the camera. I'm by myself here. But we're at the uh, Stone 14th Anniversary Brewer VIP Brewers Reception. Uh, it's a mad party. There's all kinds of amazing beers being poured, lots of amazing food. So we're going to take a few minutes. We're going to grab Dr. Bill. He's running around here. Uh, we're going to get him, get some talk time with him and a little bit with Chris, the marketing director of Stone. And maybe if we are lucky, we'll get Greg on the camera as well. We're here with uh, Chris Cochran. He's the marketing director at Stone Brewing Company. Former marketing director, now community affairs director. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Promotion. <laughs> I hope that's like more money and less time. Uh, no, I wish too. <laughs> yeah, we both have the same aspirations, Stephen. Yes, exactly. Yeah. More beer, less work, more money. There that's that's the, that's the ultimate the combination. Goal. Instead, we have more porta potties, bigger tents, and <laughs> great beer. Right on. So. Uh, the Stone 14th anniversary, the, the anniversary party is a yearly annual event. It, all the proceeds go to charities. Talk about a few of the charities that this benefits every year. Uh, the, our four primary charities, charities are the Surfrider Foundation, the Boys and Girls Club of San Marcos, the Palomar Family YMCA in Escondido, and Fight ALD. And those four charities we've worked with primarily over the last, my goodness, like six, seven years. Right, Steve Wagner, our <laughs> president and brewmaster right there as he walks by. Um, and uh, there are four charities that really are, are vital to the community and that they're great to partner with. They're really uh, good on their volunteers. I mean, the event tomorrow, we have 300 volunteers for tomorrow's event. And we couldn't do it without them. And it kind of goes back to our whole thing with, you know, like with, with Waystone, you know, kind of, you know, we wouldn't be here where we are without our fans, without the charities and everything else. And so this event that we're doing tomorrow is something that is just, it's huge for them and it's huge for us. And it's, that's awesome. Now the the Fight LED or Fight ALD charity has a special place in Stone's heart. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, Fight ALD was founded by uh, Bill and Janice Sherwood, and their son Sawyer passed away from adrenal leukodystrophy. Uh, my goodness, I don't I might not have the date right, but about eight years ago, and uh, we brewed a beer called Sawyer's Triple um, to commemorate Sawyer and his life. And Steve and Greg back then, you know, they realized, hey, you know, let's let's make this beer and let's do it for charity. And so with that money that we raised from that initial batch, uh, we, they were able to found the Fight ALD Foundation, uh, Bill and Janice. And so we still brew that beer. That money still goes to Fight ALD. Uh, and they are one of our partners here for getting volunteers to run the event as well as a beneficiary of the funds. And that's awesome. So I also know that your hair is green, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you serious? It's supposed to be red. They, they I, I said match the shirt. Match the shirt. It I totally didn't work. I don't know. No, no, no. Well, it's more of a Christmas motif that you've got going, going on. The Christmas thing. If Greg and I were together, it would be like Christmas lights on a tree. Like we got the blues, the reds, the greens. You know the whole thing. So. Well, thanks for taking a moment out of your test schedule. I know that you're busy getting Steven, all the beer you can. Cheers. You're very welcome anytime. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming out to the Stone 14th Anniversary Celebration and Invitational Beer Festival. Uh, it's a great event, great beer, great people. And uh, tonight's VIP thing is uh, just a testament to that. A lot of people here that couldn't do it, uh, that we couldn't do it without. We're here with uh, Randy Clemens. He is a renowned writer and chef as well as a cheese expert, and uh, very well known in the craft beer community as well. Randy, how are you enjoying the event tonight? So far so good. Looking forward to tomorrow though. Tomorrow we'll have the Arrogant Bastard Onion Rings, which are half the reason I'm here. <laughs> yeah, the, the Arrogant Bastard Onion Rings are the most controversial removal of an item off of a food mem menu ever. You are a writer. You're writing a book called The Sriracha Cookbook. Talk about that a little bit. Um, something I've been working on for a while now. It's going to be out uh, January 2011. It's available for pre-order on Amazon.com now. Uh, the Sriracha Cookbook, uh, it's 50 recipes that use everyone's favorite hot sauce, including mine, uh, the cool backstory behind it, everything like that. Um, there's actually a beer recipe in there. I've got a couple drink recipes in there, but there is a Sriracha Lada recipe in there. So for the, one of those hot days and you got a hammock and uh, feel like you're in a hangover. That's excellent. Drink Sriracha Lada all the way. That's excellent. Um, you've also you've also done some work in the cheese industry, and you're, so you're a cheese expert and that kind of thing. Do you ever you ever watch our show with Dr. Bill's pairings and go, oh, I wouldn't use that cheese? You know, the black and blue thing he just did down at uh, the Stone Bistro uh, that was something I discovered by accident. My ch the guy who used to do the cheese ordering at, at uh, Artisan Cheese Gallery in Studio City where I worked, um, we did a pairing and he was just fooling around. We had a buffalo's milk blue cheese with, uh, and he just tried it with Old Rasputin out of the blue and he was like, oh, oh my God, come here, come try this. And then I just did a beer dinner at uh, Tony's Darts Away in Burbank with Firestone Walker. 
and we were trying to pair the robust uh, the Walker's Reserve robust porter with um, these uh, maple chipotle sweet potato fries, and it was really good. But I was like, go get some blue cheese crumbles and put them on top of this, and it was it was exactly what did it. So no, uh, Dr. Bill, I, I think he knows what he's doing. So for the most part, the pairings they work. Right on. Now you also do some writing for the fullpint.com. I have, and I'm going to be at uh, GABF next month, so you guys will be seeing me again. We'll bump into each other. It's a small little world, especially in SoCal. Exactly. We'll definitely yeah, catch. Are, yeah. yeah, we'll definitely catch up with you on the floor of the show, and uh, maybe get some ideas from you about what's going on there as well. So it's good to see you, and cheers. Cheers, buddy. We're here with uh, Ryan Sweeney. He's the owner of the Verdugo Bar and Silly Goat. Uh, how are you enjoying the event? Oh, I love it. It's great. It's a really nice experience to come in a non kind of clustered atmosphere and going to see a lot of people that we know in the craft beer industry, so it's nice. Uh, Verdugo and Silly Goat are both uh, very prominent members of the Los Angeles craft beer scene. How do you feel like the uh, craft beer scene is shaping up in Los Angeles right now? Oh, well, this is one of my favorite subjects. I think that it's really growing and it's really exciting to see people get behind craft beer in Los Angeles and really get interested in it. I think it's a little bit different than, let's say, San Diego or San Francisco because it's very bar driven, but it's I think we have a big group of people that want the same thing and it's becoming something real nice. So, very excited about LA, LA's future in craft beer. That's excellent, that's excellent. Verdugo and Silly Goat are both amazing bars. Uh, we've never actually gone in there as a camera crew, but I think that we're going to have to set that up before I leave. So, Whatever you guys want, please come by. All right, well, it was great meeting you and uh, enjoy the rest of the night and cheers. So, uh, we're here, we're, we're with... Uh, Chris Cochran, Chris Cochran organizer of the event, <laughs> and uh, Stephen, what would you like to talk about today? Uh, yeah, anytime I can jump in. And oh, <laughs> Dr. Bill, was this? This was your camera time. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chris yeah, always jumps in, so I can't yeah. compete with that hair shirt. <laughs> So we're here with we're here with Dr. Bill. Everybody knows who Dr. Bill is, especially in our show. Uh, Bill, this is a great event. Talk about some of the. Uh, Brewers, some of the breweries that we're seeing tonight, as well as tomorrow, anything specific that we should maybe make a beeline for on the tap list? Sure. Well, we've always had the anniversary party. We've had a brewer's reception at the bistro itself and previously at the uh, brewery. But this year we decided let's use the facility and have one here up at the San Marcos campus. So I think it's turning out great. We have a lot of the uh, restaurants are involved here, and then we have all the brewers coming for the brewer's reception. Uh, they came in a little earlier at 5, and then we had uh, the general public, 500 people come in from 6 to 9 for uh, a great time, great beers. I have 24 beers on tap, actually 21 beers, three ciders, um, all donated for charity, all great beers. All the, a lot of the brewers are here, uh, the guys from Lost Abbey, um, Patrick Rue from the brewery, uh, Victor Novak from Taps, who will have some great bo barrel-aged bottles tomorrow in my rare beer section. Uh, Richard Norgrove, one of the senior brewers here, the founder of uh, Bear Republic is here, which is kind of exciting. Old friend of ours, been there many times. Uh, Bob Brewer, from, who has a great name but is not the brewer, <laughs> from Anchor is here. He's just a fixture here always. Of course, all of our brew crew is here and many more. I'm sure Adam Avery will flitter in eventually and uh, there's just a great lineup of brewers here. Beers, we have a lot of great things. We're Stone Distributing is bringing in Great Divide. We're very excited about that. Tomorrow, we've added another event. We have a section that I'm running uh, that uh, was 500 tickets uh, for charity also, and it is uh, a rare beer section. And then on top of that, because I just can't have a rare beer section, we have Dr. Bill's Corner. So when you first come into that event, you have uh, 15 of the great rare beers, and then when you get past that, you work your way to my corner and I have amazing beers. I have beers that have never been served in the United States before, like uh, Stroessa's uh, Black Damnation 2 and 3. I have beers uh, like Adam Avery, that was a brewery release only, Quinn Q Partite, which is amazing barrel-aged sour ale. Um, Tommy Arthur's given us a keg of Deliverance, which is his Angel Share Brandy and uh, Serpent Stout on bourbon barrel, and uh, he's going to start releasing that tomorrow. I mean, excuse me, on Sunday, so we get the first release of that. So, and another one I'm really excited about is uh, Lagan Laganitas, their Sonoma Farmhouse Ale. They not, it's a one of the kind keg. They actually took, they've done it in Pinot barrels and Chardonnay barrels, so they took young Pinot and Chardonnay barrel farmhouse ales, blended that with two year old 
farmhouse pinot barrel. So it's a one-off. It's never been done anywhere else. It's just up in my corner. So that'll be really fun. Of course, our 14th anniversary, we did the Imperial IPA. So we've done a lot of treatments of that. We have many, many casts down here in the General Festival done with different British hops, dry hopped. We also have a double dry hopped Imperial IPA that's very popular tonight here. So uh, just a plethora of great beers. Right on. Yeah, the, the anniversary parties are always a highlight. It's, it's kind of like SoCal's own Great American Beer Fest. Um, they get better every year, and every year you go, you think it can't get any better than this, and the next year it does. So if you're watching this and you didn't come this year, uh, you missed out, but be ready for next year. It's always, in, always August 21st. That's right. And next year will be even better up in my area, I can tell you that, because this is my first year, so it only gets better when I set up a fest. Right so the rare beer will be great. Well, thanks a lot for taking some time. I know you're pretty busy tonight, so we'll let you get back to it. And uh, Cheers. We're with a couple of the amazing brewers in the local area here with us. This is the Taps Brew House uh, brew team, Victor, Kyle, and Evan. Uh, how you guys doing tonight? Doing well. Fantastic. Yeah. Amazingly fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for that epic statement. <laughs> so, uh, Talk a little bit about what Taps is doing. You guys, you guys have a, you guys have a, some barrel aged beers that are coming out tomorrow at, here at the festival. Talk a little bit about that. Sure, we're sort of our first run at barrel aged beer. We have uh, what we call Jive. That is our old ale that we aged uh, for six months in a uh, a new French oak barrel. Then we have Hillbilly, which Evan named. That is our uh, old ale aged in a bourbon barrel. And then we have Remy, named after a buddy of mine, uh, is the uh, Imperial Russian Stout aimed, uh, aged in, in the uh, bourbon barrel as well. That sounds amazing. I can't wait to try each of those. So, uh, so what do you guys have coming up in the future for, for TAPS? Uh, one of the things, uh, we have a Session Pale Ale, um, kind of 4% in alcohol. Uh, Kind of in your face, kind of hop character, uh, not so much bitterness, um, you know, but lower in alcohol, so it's easy to drink. You know, it's, uh, I don't think there's enough beers out there like that. And, uh, you know, we're trying to really, obviously, have some of these really big in your face beers like these barrel aged ones we're putting out tomorrow, along with ones that you can sit down and have a few of and actually drive home okay without being too over, you know. Right on. Yeah, I'm, we've been a big proponent of bringing back the session beers because the craft beer community does seem to have gotten into that, like, if it doesn't have 10 to 18 percent alcohol in it, I don't want to drink it. But it's great when you can get a really full flavored beer that's in the five to six range that is a great sessionable beer. So, you know, Vienna Lager or Keller Pills, doing the lagers is, is, is something that we really love to do. Um, you know, the San Diego Brewers and a lot of brewers in Southern California do these big, beautiful ales. But our my background, anyway, is back on the East Coast doing these beautiful, smooth, you know, Vienna Lagers, Keller Pills, Hellas, uh, Dunkel, all that kind of stuff is nice to do as well. So. Right on. And Taps isn't just a fantastic craft brewer. They're also an amazing restaurant. Uh, check them out in downtown Brea. Uh, what's your website? Uh, tapsfishhouse.com. So tapsfishhouse.com, check them out. Amazing food. They got, you guys have an amazing chef over there. I love yeah, that guy. He does some amazing yeah. stuff with beer. Uh, yeah, they do some great beer uh, brewmaster dinners occasionally. Uh, so check them out, and thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. Salud. Cheers, Salud. We're at the uh, Stone 14th anniversary. It's the VIP Brewers Reception. We're here with Greg Cook, who is the ultimate arrogant bastard, and this is essentially your event so talk about what it means for you to be 14 years old and having throwing this kind of an event well you know more importantly it's uh new brew thursday hey <laughs> <laughs> Woo! so right on where was i oh yeah <laughs> he's like so yeah it's the it's the 14th anniversary celebration mm -hmm. and uh this is the party that we throw for everybody and for ourselves well well frankly for everybody else uh this is the first anniversary celebration related event that i've had a beer at for now, I think six or seven years. Wow. So we had to stop drinking a, a number of years ago when it got so busy and so complex that we were going to fail to be able to, you know, hold the event and keep it from melting down if we were drinking. Like, oh, there's people here. They need. Be we're, we're drinking. Whatever. <laughs> so. Yeah. There was a. We had a near meltdown. I don't remember when it was. I think it was like the seventh anniversary or something. It was like, okay, now this is going to be an issue. <laughs> So, uh, and uh, so we passed the rule for ourselves. Now, just this year, for the first time, the uh, people who have been working with Stone uh, for five years get one session off, the second session, uh, as a five-year reward. 
and then if you've been working here for 10 years at Stone, then then you you've done your time and you're you're free to go from there on out. But all of us 10-year workers, all of us 10-year Stone people or more, I, I'm a couple more years more than that. Uh, we're all still working tomorrow, anyways. Well, it's it's a what it takes. yeah, it's a great event, and there are it's it's a highlight for the Southern California area. And um, you know, I mentioned earlier when I was talking to Bill, it's kind of like the SoCal's version of JBF. You get all the greatest brewers in the area, even throughout the United States, that show up for these things. And uh, there's fantastic beer that's poured. But I can't help but notice that your hair is green, and that's not normal, I don't think. So is talk. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. Hey. Hey. Hey there. So talk a little you bit doing? about why you've got green hair and why half the other people around here do. Well, uh, every two years now, for and this is the fifth time we've done it, we have something called uh, Die Hards for Charity, and the premise is very simple. It's sort of like a walkathon, but instead of taking pledges to walk a certain distance, we take pledges to, in this case, this year, dye your hair green for a week. We've done green and red and blue in the past. Uh, it's a very simple, uh, yeah, albeit uh, it's a harebrained scheme. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, it's a very simple uh, premise, and uh, my personal goal is five thousand dollars this year. And we uh, will have a uh, hundred people, about, in the, from the community and from Stone Brewing, participate. It's completely voluntary, and uh, yeah, it's terrific. This year, plus the years past that we've done it, all five years, just of the hair dyeing alone. We expect it will total over $185,000 donated to charity this year just because of this. That's excellent. So green is just not for the hair. It's for the money it brings in as well. So that's, right. that's amazing. One of the nice things about Stone is all of the events that you throw, the the proceeds generally go to charity, the, the brown bag ticket events. and Generally. Well, always, excuse me. I didn't want to say always and have you go, well, not always, but. Well, okay, <laughs> so. so yeah, events we, we do at our brewery, like the um, the Equinox, where we buy all the beer and we serve it on our premise. Yeah, that that's it's a, an event that is not a charity event. But this big thing, it's always been a charity event. Um, when you add up all of the charity stuff that we've done over the years and cash donated, uh, I believe it will add up to over a million dollars since we started Stone Brewing Company. That's great. And that really epitomizes the, the craft beer community and the, the idea behind craft beer, which is to get behind the community that you're a part of, the community that's supporting you locally, and to give back that way. And so it's, it's awesome that you guys are doing that. And we thank you for taking some of your time out of your busy schedule to come over and, you know, scream into the camera for us. Absolutely. It's a genuine pleasure to scream into the camera. <laughs> ha! So, thanks a lot. Have a good one. Cheers. We're here with the one of the main brewers of uh, Stone Brewing Company, Mitch Steele. Uh, probably the brewer at this point, right? Uh, the head brewer, the yeah, head brewer. yeah. So the man, all the beer you drink that comes from him. So uh, talk a little bit about what uh, Stone's been doing, what they're going to be doing, and uh, what people can look forward to. Well, uh, we get you know, there's always something new going on. We've uh, we just released, or we're releasing on Monday, a collaboration beer that we did with Kelsey McNair, who's a home brewer with uh, the San Diego Homebrew Club Quaff and Colby Chandler from Ballast Point, and that's a 4.2% uber hoppy uh, golden uh, ale. Uh, we're calling it San Diego County Session Ale. It's a wonderful beer, and we're going to be pouring it tomorrow at the, at the fest, and that'll be its debut, its official debut, and then it'll be available on Monday for everybody. Uh, that one's really exciting, really happy about how that one came out. Uh, we're kind of tailing off with the uh, Stone 14th Anniversary Imperial IPA, that one is um, kind of uh, running to the end of its course right now, and that one was, we really like that one, that came out nice. Uh, and we're just starting to brew the Vertical Epic for 10-10-10, uh, uh, and we're starting to brew Double Bastard as well, so it's that time of year. This, this year is kind of interesting because Double Bastard Ale and the Stone 10-10-10 Vertical Epic Ale are kind of coming out right about the same time, so we're... Uh, we're uh, dealing with some capacity issues. And yeah, I can imagine the brew house is going to be a lot of fun around that time. So <laughs> yeah, we're 24/7 uh, trying to get those beers through the, through the system. So yeah, it's good times. Thanks for taking some time out and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Cheers. Well, cheers. We're here with Bob Brewer, um, who is not, in fact, a brewer. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> Bob is one of the original uh, sales representatives for Anchor Brewing Company. So, how are you enjoying the event tonight? Very nice, very nice event. Well put on. So, uh, Anchor's been in the lose a lot. They've, they've been recently bought by another company. How do you think that's going to affect them in the, uh, going moving forward in the future? I think it's all going to be positive. Um, 
Fritz Maytag, the owner, after having the brewery for 45 years, decided to sell it and retire, and uh, he was very careful uh, in selecting a purchaser, and uh, the current group, uh, very interested in keeping the brewery as it is, uh, keeping the iconic status of Anchor Brewing Company, positive changes, there will be a little bit more marketing, bringing us up to speed a little bit in terms of uh, office and infrastructure and that sort of thing, but uh, you'll never know it by drinking the beer, which will remain the same. That's excellent. Fritz is uh, obviously one of the pioneers of the craft beer community, and um, if you can trust anybody to make sure the brewery ends up in the right hands, it's him. So uh, I look forward to seeing what's going to happen with them, and uh, thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time, and we'll let you get back to enjoying the event. No problem. Thank you. We're with Patrick Rue. Everyone knows you. You're the brewery. You're, you're the phenomenal SoCal brewery that's coming up on the scene. Um, how are you enjoying the night tonight? Having a great time drinking wonderful beers with cool people. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what did you guys bring for the fest? Uh, you, you brought something tonight or uh, you're bringing stuff tomorrow? Uh, yeah, tonight we had Hemio Slogger, which we'll have again tomorrow, as long uh, or as well as uh, Orchard White and uh, Filthy Redhead and uh, a few other interesting beers. Uh, I think we have uh, Barrel Age Cotton up at the, uh, the rear beer tent or whatever. <laughs> yeah, barrel aged cotton is definitely a rare beer. So I love that filthy red though. I had that a couple of weeks ago at the uh, tasting room. That's that's amazing beer. So you guys are doing some great stuff with Britannomyces. Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, fun to work with it. Uh, sort of did it more out of uh, practicality. Uh, just keep the yeast alive so we could use it for other beers. And you know, why not do 100% bread beers? So now, for the Reserve Society, you guys just released a three-beer set of allotments. Uh, you you kind of snuck two of them in that uh, a lot of us weren't expecting. So talk a little bit about those beers and what maybe we can expect from uh, when we drink those. Yeah, so we have a new bottle shop opening up, so we uh, called the Brewery Provisions. Uh, so we are creating a new uh, line or new series of beers you know, just for that shop. Uh, so the uh, first one's called, called Premier, uh, so that's a barrel-aged, uh, bourbon barrel-aged, uh, golden strong ale, very tasty, about 10%. Uh, only aged for about uh, two, uh, two to three months, so uh, not intensely bourbon-y, but nice beer. And then uh, Gunga Galanga, which is a, uh, a black beer, 100% uh, Britannomyces uh, with uh, uh, kefir lime, and uh, Galanga, which is a, uh, I guess, well, it's not ginger, but it's uh, similar to ginger, kind of a root, uh, very prevalent in Thai foods, really fresh and nice. Um, so, yeah, it's very herbal, citric, and uh, I don't know, very cleansing. It's a nice beer. That sounds amazing. I'm looking forward. I bought three bottles for myself, so I'm going to definitely rip one of those open right away and, and get, see what I can expect out of it. Will we be able to try them on uh, the tasting room anytime soon? Um, I don't know. Uh, they were bottled. <laughs> Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we bottle them completely, uh, so if we do any tasting, it'll be out of the bottle and okay. probably just samples and see what people think. Right on. And so obviously, uh, you got Black Tuesday coming out again too, so we're very excited about that. But when can we expect the uh, provisionary store to open up, the new tasting room? Um, it'll be sometime in September. We're kind of shooting for that first or second week of September, but okay. we'll see how quickly we can. Uh, I don't know, paint the place and make it look nice. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I know you've been you've been attacked by all the random podcasters, beer bloggers, and or TV shows that are filming here today. So we'll let you get back to the show and enjoy your night. So thank you very much. And see you.